हेलो एवरी वन सो टूडे आई हैव ए स्पेशल गेस्ट विथ मी फ्यू डेज बैक इफ यू हैव सीन दैट वीडियो आई डोंट नो इफ इट इज रिलीज बाय द टाइम वी रिलीज दिस वीडियो वी हैड बीन टू ए कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल द एक्टेल कॉन्फ्रेंस एंड देर आई मेट पंकज ही इज डूइंग पी एच डी इन एस्टोनिया and he works exactly in the similar field in which i am working and we have met also before if you had seen the uh, summer school video in bari which will be here in the information card uh, so i leave it to pankaj to give a short introduction and the purpose of this video is to give you a short intro into the uh, admission requirements and the process and the experience of doing a phd uh, in estonia uh hello everyone so my name is pankaj i am doing my phd so it's been one year and i am doing my phd in educational technology in tallinn university estonia so before that i did my masters from mnit jaipur and then i was teaching and uh last year i applied in estonia so in this video i'm going to share my experience like what's the admission process so in case if you are looking forward to apply for phd in abroad it can be helpful for you so uh so let's uh so to begin with so first of all what you have to do the first requirement you have to contact a professor in tallinn university so in my case i am from computer science and uh, so uh, i actually so you just send an email to any uh, professor or you contact via linkedin or there is no such procedure uh, no so the thing is like uh, it would be better if you can check the profile of professors or senior researcher who are working in tallinn university and if you find that someone research work is closely related to your interest field then it will be uh, more nicer to contact that particular person in case if you don't know like to whom to contact uh, we can share the information about the prof uh, professor in the description you can write a email to him and uh, he can guide you in the direction which can be more suitable to your profile so the this is the first step you have to contact a mm -hmm. senior researcher once the senior researcher approved okay uh, he or she will going to be your potential or future supervisor the next step you have to prepare a research proposal with your uh, future supervisor and uh, i would say like this process like you have to put a little bit effort in uh, preparing that research proposal you have to read some research article and uh, in that process that uh, uh, senior researcher or professor will help you and in my case i was lucky like the my current supervisor he helped me a lot in preparing that research proposal so in that proposal mm -hmm. do you like um, i mean like get any hints like what is the phd position about when they open something when you send them an email you get an already an idea like what will be your field of work or you just write a proposal based on your interest and then they reply you something on that like uh very good question <laughs> so the thing is like uh, it's not like uh, you can write a random research proposal so this is not the case like your research proposal has to be in align with the research conducted in the institution and in this regard when you will write to professor or senior researcher they will actually suggest you some potential research topic in which the university is doing research and then you have to explore those topics so if you think those topics uh, are of your interest you can write a research proposal in that mm -hmm. so once you are done with the research proposal then we move to step 3 we move to step 3 okay. so you submit that application in addition to that you also submit your transcript your academic uh, diploma certificate mm -hmm. and you also need to provide uh, english proficiency skill that you can speak english right and read so IMDs. it can be yes IELTS or TOEFL, and do you have any cutoff for the CGPA or it's not like that? Ah, uh, right now I don't remember exactly, but I think it has to be more than six. Oh, okay. Overall okay. score. So, in your masters, or they also see your bachelor's grade? No, I'm talking about uh, IELTS score. 
Oh, sorry. I was talking about the CGPA cutoff uh, in masters because if you are applying for PhD, I think they see only masters. That's what happens in most places in Netherlands. I don't know about. Uh, so right now, actually, I I'm, I don't remember actually, so I cannot say exact number. Uh, what was your CGPA? Uh, so mine was like uh, above eight. Okay. So that's a very good CGP. So if you think so, yes. <laughs> video comedy seriously you add it okay mm -hmm. so I mean even if you don't remember but uh, yeah I think maybe it can be like above more than seven or seven point five but if you need like accurate information but you can write to me like I can provide okay. you the information okay maybe we can also add it in the description later yes. when I get the information for you so check the description mm -hmm. and do they also see the bachelor's grade or it's only master's? No, so the thing is you need to provide your bachelor, master, both transcripts and grade sheet as well. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so once you submit your application with all the, your diploma certificate, grade sheet, they will uh, fix a interview date with you. So that also the next uh, crucial step in the admission process. Mm -hmm. And in that interview, they actually going to, they, they won't go in detail. They just want to see like uh, the proposal you have prepared. Like what's your uh, so, so idea about that proposal? Yes. Interview will be centered around your proposal. Only. Yes. And they will also ask some basic question about your background. And your it will education. be a Skype interview, right? Yeah, it will be a Skype interview. And in my case, there were like... Uh, four to five uh, person okay so there can so, be professor senior researcher and mostly they are more or less interested to have to be part of a research team that's why they are also in the interview or not. Uh, no they are actually i would say uh, some hiring hr yeah, or something. Uh, not hr they are actually professor in the department where you are applying okay they are the main people who are responsible for this uh, PhD, all, all admission, uh, PhD admission process. Y yes, I think. Okay. So and what's the next step? Then? So this interview actually, uh, so you don't need to worry about this interview. Actually, this won't be go, this won't go in much detail. Mm -hmm. But the thing is like, if you have prepared your research proposal, it will not be that difficult for you. So they just ask you about the proposal. They ask you about your idea, what you envision in the future like what kind of research you want to do so in the end of your this interview they will prepare a grade for you so they will give you a mark out of 100 and these marks actually prepared on the basis of first thing your research proposal that is the most important part second thing this interview this interview also actually uh, have some marks and the rest of the marks uh, you will get on the basis of your diploma certificate, your education and the grade point you got during your education. So on the basis of all these three things, you will get a marks and the minimum criteria is that you need to get more than 75 if I am correct. Okay. So in case if you are above 75, it means uh, yes. you are eligible. But the thing is that uh, it also depends how many candidates has applied for PhD in the same department. But and it's what good that they have made this transparent, like the scoring process, because no, most yes, so don't that's get the this in other good thing. Like you would know what was your score, mm. and uh, and at then they will compare your score with the rest of the candidates, okay. and on the basis of. Uh, funding like the number of positions available in the department mm -hmm. they will select the like uh, so like, you don't need anywhere to come to the campus for a campus interview before no 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 like you don't so in my case like i was in india when this interview was happened mm -hmm. so uh yeah okay and moving on from admission to doing the phd itself how mm -hmm. long have you been already doing the phd in estonia uh, so now I have completed one year and uh, yeah like uh, it's not been that good but I also won't say it was not bad as well so I there was like a lot of things to learn when you start doing your research uh, 
so yeah like i don't think there is much to say right now but uh, yeah it was a very good experience from learning perspective i learned a lot of thing and i hope can you it will be same in the next year as well okay that's great uh, can you just give like two or three points that you really learned in your first year of phd from this team or the supervisor or something which you didn't know actually uh, um, based on your education in india well the first thing like research environment here is really nice like first of all you are not treated as a student you are treated as a like kind of colleague mm -hmm. and uh, your perception also respected by other people it's not like you are a student and uh, if you are proposing some idea no one is going to say this is like total rubbish or something like everything whatever you are saying everything will be respected mm -hmm. and that's the very good point and people are very supportive and in terms of like support and funding you will get like very good opportunity here so i would say like uh, i am really happy with my current position okay uh, so touching upon the funding because that is what most people ask uh, what is the scenario like uh, as we have something like uh, you are employee here in netherlands and you get some salary so what is the system in estonia like uh, whether you get a scholarship or a salary or so what is the system and how much is it like okay so the best thing about uh, estonia is that all phd are like uh, fully funded in what i mean is that mm -hmm. you don't need to pay any tuition fee so mm -hmm. the tuition fee are completely waived okay and in, the, in addition with that you also will get uh, doctoral scholarship mm -hmm. that is like throughout estonia mm -hmm. wherever you are doing your phd you will get that scholarship and that scholarship is around 660 euro per month per month okay. and uh, from 2019 they also started an additional doctoral stipend mm -hmm. to support the student because they also think this amount is not uh, sufficient for a family person mm -hmm. so in addition to 660 you will also get around uh, 440 euro as well so in total it will be like uh, 1100 okay and in addition with that once you start your phd maybe in second year or third year you might get involved in some research project and from those research project you also might get some mm -hmm. uh, additional yeah additional salary of income okay and the same thing i guess because it's all over europe like you get to travel in multiple conferences mm -hmm. and everything is paid by the university like yes. the flight and everything like So yeah so in uh, in this regard i would mention like uh, uh, this institution provide like uh, a lot of scholarship opportunity to phd students so this scholarship is known as like dora plus scholarship and this we'll has we'll actually, put it in the description yeah. below so that is so it has like uh, multiple options uh, it depends like uh, if you want to attend a conference or you want to go to another institution for research stay mm -hmm. so they will uh, give you funding So I think like so far I didn't have any issue Issues. regarding funding and you yeah. have already attended two, and two yeah, conferences yes so as I already told you like I completed my first year and uh, I attended one uh, summer school in Italy mm -hmm. and it was funded by that okay. uh, Dora Plus scholarship and additionally I also got opportunity to attend this ACTEL which is very prestigious conference in no. our field so that is also funded by our university so i am i am okay. thankful to them uh okay and what about the like uh, if you are wondering by now that uh, whether this amount is sufficient or not then we'll be covering this in the next video where we discuss about cost of living so make sure to watch the next video about Uh, cost of living housing any type of questions that surround uh, your living expenses so what did we miss about the phd itself did we miss anything like do you have something like a one year review because we have something like a one year review and then uh, our contract gets yes. extended and so, what is the duration also like so the thing is like when you got admitted here in the beginning of the year you have to write a plan for 
mm-hmm. your one year the what proposal, what yeah. are you going to do like in terms of what kind of courses you are going to take and what okay. kind of research activity you are going to do so you have so, to also take some courses in yes so uh, so yeah like uh, something like personal development right like I writing mean, or yeah like uh, so right now let's say i'm taking this multivariate stats okay like academic writing mm-hmm. so from these courses and from your research activity you will get some credit okay and by the end of the year they will check like what you proposed and what you actually achieved mm-hmm. was it same or there is like huge difference so for instance like in the beginning of the year if i'm saying okay i'm going to uh, complete x credit and by the end of year i completed very less credit so in the review process they will actually see what you did entire year and in case if you got less than 45 credit in that case like that will be the problematic case and in that case your full time status will be converted into part time and you also might lose your scholarship okay so initially when you get the visa your uh, the status that you get is like a working visa status or employee status or so, it has some special name? so in estonia like uh, uh, this visa is known as like d visa okay. this is actually eligible for 6 month okay. it will allow you to stay in sengen mm-hmm. countries for 6 month and uh, the thing is like when you got this d visa you also apply for TRP okay. because most of the cases when students got uh, uh, what is TRP? Uh, TRP stand for like temporary residence permit okay. for Estonia. So in case if you have enough time, for instance, let's say you are going to come in Estonia after three or four months. In that case, you can go for TRP. But the thing is that TRP takes a lot of time, like at least two months. Mm-hmm. Or if you are applying out of Estonia, then it will take like three months around. So in some cases, like a student wants to come to Estonia, like uh, once they got the admission and the, when they about to, when they are expected to arrive in Estonia, the, the gap between these two events are very short. And in that case, if you are going for TRP, it's not possible for you to get the TRP. So that's why people go for visa and it will get around seven to eight, eight days to get that visa. So you can mm-hmm. travel with that visa, you can arrive here. And then after coming here, if you already applied for TRP in your uh, home country, in that case, you will get your TRP after coming here. So this TRP actually valid for your study duration. So if you are doing your master's, it will be valid for two years, if I'm correct. But in my case, it is valid for four years. Four years. Okay. Okay. Then I think we covered, we touched upon most of the points that yes, you might so. encounter if you choose to study, do PhD in Estonia. So, and don't hesitate to contact, contact me. Yeah. So all the contact details will be below through which you can contact him and also make sure, as I say in my case, that don't ask uh, something which is like, I would say very stupid like which is really very which you can find in Google like the things we are trying to cover in the video is like something you cannot get to know unless you talk with someone doing a PhD there so don't annoy or I I would say like because the thing is like when you get on keep getting questions keep on getting questions we are also very busy so uh, expect that you will get a response after a certain amount of time you cannot get immediate response and do you want to add anything before we end this video no like i just want to say i would be really uh, happy to help in case if some of you want to know more about uh, doing phd in estonia Mm. and if you have any question as he already mentioned like you can write to me and or him as well yeah he can direct to me and make sure to join the facebook group which is in the description below so it will help every one of us because there are people from Germany, people from, I think there will be people from Switzerland, not as of now, and people from obviously Netherlands, and there will be people from Estonia now, so it will be like a hub to support anyone who wants to do anything in Europe. And there's just a spoiler which I heard from him, I don't know if he's going to do it, but that he's going to open his YouTube channel soon, which I don't know how how far is that soon, but so I just... 
said it mm. so that you will also make sure that if anyone is watching it who is going to come to Estonia can see this or who wants to evaluate different options in Europe and make sure to watch the next video on cost of living and expenses in Estonia which will be the last video in this series because he is also leaving us soon so till next time don't forget to share the video among your friends uh, like the video if you like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel see you in next video till then peace thank you भाई लोगों को लगेगा ना अभी लोगों को लगेगा पीएचडी आगे उठ के उड़ के आ गया कि इंडिया लोग कनेक्ट कैसे करेंगे तुम क्या ओके